Hello and welcome. This video is about the map and filter function in Python. Although those functions are very useful and important, I'm not using them at all. In the end of this video, I'm explaining why that is. Unfortunately, you have to understand them, so let's get started. The map function is working like that. You have an iterable object, for example a list, and the map function is just applying a certain function which you are defining to each element in this iterable object. So let's create a list to understand what's happening here. So we are defining list one and we're just using a list containing three elements here. So we are taking two, four and five. Here. Iterable object created, done. Now we need to define a certain function and we are taking the probably the most easiest function. So we are taking times two here, which is taking x as an argument and returns us x times two. So this function is working in the following way. Times two, if we are taking an argument now, for example, five, we are getting a 10. So this is just multiplying an input by 2. Now I want to map this function to this list 1. What does that mean in easy words? I just want to multiply each element of this list by 2. And that is done by a map function. So we are using map, then use the function, which is times 2. So that is the first argument of this map function. And then we are taking the iterable object, which is our list 1. So we are taking list one and execute that. Now we are just getting an information that a map iterator has been created. So how can we work with that? So how can we make our result visible? That is done by using the, for example, the list argument. So we are using the list argument and containing the map iterator in parentheses. If we are executing that, we are getting what we wanted to get. So we are getting this list multiplied by two. Okay. So again, the map function is just mapping a certain function to each element of an iterable object, for example, a list. You could also use, for example, tuple here and create a tuple with this map function. So that is also possible. By the way, you could also create a set here. Also possible, but you don't necessarily have to understand that. Understand that you are creating a list out of that. And as you see, we are getting a list, which is the first list multiplied by two because we mapped the function times two to this list. An alternative way and the exact same as this one here would be to use a lambda function. If you're not quite sure about lambda functions, click my video on that. So we could use again map, then use lambda x, x times two. So this is our function part again. And now we are using the iterable object again and store that all in a list. And we are getting the exact same results as you see here. So that is also working. You just need a function here. No matter if it's a traditional, let's call it traditional function or a lambda function, that does not matter. Let us take a look at another example and a pretty nice use case of the map function and that is multiplying two lists. So we have to define a second list here. We're just taking two, three and four here, okay? Now we need to define a function which is multiplying two items or two arguments. So we are defining multiply here, take x and y as the input of this function, and we are just returning the product of those two arguments here. So let's execute that and let's actually test this function so that you understand what this function is doing. We are just using this function to three and five, for example, and we are getting 15 as an output. So we are just getting the product of the arguments. Now we can map this function to those two lists. So that is done with the syntax from above. So we are defining the function now, which is multiply. And I'm using list one as the first argument and list two as the second argument. Afterwards, I'm using the list function and execute that. And as you see, we're getting four, 12 and 20, which is two times two is four, four times three is 12 and five times four is 20. Worked perfectly, right? Now you could also use the lambda function again to perform this. So that would be just using list, map, then lambda, x and y as the parameters, and then just x times y, and then use list one and list two. That should give you the same result. And as you see, it does. So that is another possibility to perform this. Of course, you could perform other operations here, right? So you could do plus, for example, and then just adding up those elements and whatever operation you can imagine. You could do exponential and stuff like that. So everything is possible here, okay? 
Okay, perfect. I think we got that. Let's move on to the filter function. And the cool thing is now, if you got the concept of the map function, you will have an easy time understanding the filter function. The syntax, as you see here, is basically the same as the map function. And the difference is that the function which you're applying to an iterable object is just filtering out everything which is fulfilled in this function. So what does that mean? Let's define an iterable object first. We are defining a list and this is just containing some numbers between 1 and 10. So we are just typing down stuff here randomly. And now we need to define a function. So this part here, which is filtering stuff out of this iterable object. So let's define, for example, let's just define, let's, let's just call it func. And we are providing x as an argument. And now we are telling this function if x is larger than, let's take 4, return us the x. So that is our function, which we are applying to this iterable object with the filter function. So if we are doing that and use filter and then provide the function func and use list4 as the iterable object here, we are getting the same one as we got when applying the map function and that is the iterator here. So we need, again, just to define a list function out of that iterator and execute that. And as you see, we are getting this list here without all elements which are not larger than 4. Okay, so as you see, we're just getting 6, 8, 7, 6, and 9 here. Everything else is filtered out as this condition is not fulfilled. So a more elegant way or a more convenient way maybe would be to use a lambda function again and that would be to just define lambda of x and then x is larger than 4 as the function part here and the iterable object is again list 4 and as you see we're getting the exact same result so this way is more recommended here. Okay let's take an additional example here maybe this time without numbers so let's define a list out of names here let's say Sarah, Lisa and Joe now I want to filter this list and contain only those names who have at least four letters, okay? So that would be Sarah and Lisa. Let's do that with the filter function. So we are using list again, contain filter. Then we're using a lambda function to implement that by lambda x and then length of this x is, what did I say, at least four. So we got larger than three and we provide list 5 as the iterable object and if we're executing that we are getting exactly what we wanted to get and that is only those names which have at least four letters. Okay to summarize awesome functions very useful and not that hard to implement so why am I not using them? There is an alternative which I'm preferring and that is using list comprehension I've promoted that like in five videos of mine. So let's go to the very beginning of this video and use list comprehension to perform every single step of this video. Why am I doing that? To show you that you don't necessarily need those functions and you can perform everything what you can perform with map and filter functions with list comprehension. So what did we do in the first place? That was, what was it again? We were multiplying this list by two. So let's do that by list comprehension. So we are opening up square brackets here and we are just telling Python i times 2 for i in list 1 and execute that and as you see done. So next one multiplying two lists with the map function. So let's do that with list comprehension. So we are using i times e for i e in zip list 1 list 2 here and execute that and we're getting the same results. So Again, we don't necessarily need the map function to perform this. And I'm doing that really quickly here, so I made videos on that as well. So I'm just showing you that you can perform these operations with list comprehension. So if you don't understand what's going on here, just click my video on list comprehension and other videos on my channel. So next one was the filter function. And give me a second, what did we do here? We made the filter that the x is larger than 4, so let's insert a cell here, so we could do that by i for i in, what is that list for, and then if i 
is larger than 4. So we got the exact same result here as you see. And in the very last one, we did the length one. So we are just using i for i in list 5. And then if length of i is larger than 3. And as you see, we're getting the same result again using list comprehension. For me, there is no point in using the map and filter function. I don't know any use case where you can't use list comprehension, where you can use map and filter. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm really looking forward to a discussion with you. And I'm also looking forward to you supporting this channel by subscribing and liking the video. Thank you very much in advance and thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.